Hello, welcome to the UA Education Abroad Visa Research Presentation. We look forward to helping you navigate the visa application process as it pertains to your plans abroad. During this presentation, we will give you an overview on where to start and how to complete your visa application. As a disclaimer, the UA Education Abroad Office staff are not legal experts. The information presented in this video comes from each country's official embassy and consulate website. In addition, the visa application process may or may not change at any given time. Please make sure to check the country's official embassy or consulate website for the most up-to-date and accurate information. The second thing we would like to mention is that we are basing this guide on the assumption that you have American citizenship. If you are an international student or a dual citizen who plans to use their non-American passport to enter a country abroad, please be aware that you will need to go through the visa application process at the embassy in your home country. The final thing we would like to mention is that no two visa applications are the same. Each country has their own regulations for the visa application process. For example, Angel may go through the Australian visa process fully online and it takes only a few weeks to get approved. Daniel may have to go to the Italian consulate in person and it will take him several months to complete the process. And then there's Mariah and Jason. They are going on a short-term faculty-led program. But since they are going to Vietnam, they have to apply for a visa prior to departure. In other words, every situation is different. So just to iterate again, your visa situation may depend on a variety of factors. These can include the location of travel, your nationality, the length of your stay abroad, the reason you are traveling to that country, which can include studying, interning, etc., and the current geopolitical situation. If you have questions about your specific country's visa process, please feel free to contact the Education Abroad Office. So you may be asking yourself, where do I start? Well, the first question you need to answer is, do I even need a visa? The general rule of thumb is that if you are planning to stay in a country for 90 days or more, you will need to apply for a long-term visa. If your program is less than 90 days, then most of the time you will not need to apply for a visa prior to departure. As a U.S. citizen, you will receive a visa upon entry. However, there are exceptions to that rule. For example, Vietnam and China require U.S. citizens to apply for a visa prior to departure, even if it is for a short-term visit. That is why it is very important to check your country's embassy to see whether or not you must apply for a visa prior to departure. The second question you will need to ask yourself is whether or not your program offers visa assistance. If the answer is yes, then we highly recommend that you take advantage of it. For an additional fee, there are some providers that will take care of the entire visa process for you. The cost usually averages to around $300. Many students find that investment worth it because it gives them the peace of mind that someone else is taking care of it. If your program offers minimal to no assistance, that is okay. Just keep on paying attention to this guide. The first thing you will need to do when filling out a visa application by yourself is to find out which consulate location has jurisdiction over your permanent address or school address. It's usually up to you to decide which one you would like to use. In the next few slides, we will show you how to go about this process. For our first example, we will highlight our most popular study abroad location for UA students, Spain. In order to find your consulate, you should look up online the Spanish Embassy in Washington, D.C. Since Washington, D.C. is the U.S. capital, that is where countries like to have their embassies. When you click on the official website, it will most likely be in Spanish, unless your browser auto-translates. 
To switch the language to English, click ENG on the top of the page. After that, you should be able to find the Consulates tab. Click on that and you will be able to find which consulate is in charge of your jurisdiction. If you decide to use your address in Florida, South Carolina, or Georgia, you will be under the Miami Consulate's jurisdiction. If you are planning to use your address in Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, New Mexico, Oklahoma, or Texas, then you will be under the Houston Consulate. There are, of course, other consulates located across the country, but for brevity's sake, we have decided to highlight these two. If your state is not listed here, refer to the previous slide on how to find your consulate. For our second example, we will cover Italy, which was the second most popular destination for UA students who wanted to go abroad last year. In order to find your consulate, search online the phrase Italy Embassy, Washington, D.C. When you click on the official website, it will most likely be in Italian, unless your browser auto-translates. To switch the language to English, click ENG on the top right-hand corner. After that, you should be able to find the Consulates in USA tab. Click on that and you will be able to find which consulate is in charge of your jurisdiction. If your address is in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi, Puerto Rico, or the U.S. Virgin Islands, you will be under the Miami Consulate's jurisdiction. If your address is in Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, or Texas, you will be under the Houston Consulate. This goes to show that different countries have their own way of marking jurisdictions. Always check with the main embassy to see which consulate you fall under. Again, as stated earlier in the presentation, if your state was not mentioned here, please refer to the previous slide on how to find your consulate. One thing we would like to mention before moving on is the honorary consulate. Honorary consulates are like outposts for certain consulates. For example, if you're not able to travel to the Italian consulate of Miami, and your address is in Mississippi or Alabama, you may be able to submit your visa application to the Honorary Consulate in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. The country you are planning to go to may or may not have honorary consulates in the U.S. In order to find this information, please go to the website of your local consulate. There, you should be able to find information regarding honorary consulates, if they have any. The second thing you should do when filling out a visa application by yourself is to gather the necessary documents. To illustrate this, we will highlight the United Kingdom's required documents for the general student visa, Tier 4, as an example. The first item you will need is a valid passport with at least one page blank. Bear in mind that if your passport is six months or less away from expiring, you will be denied from traveling outside the country. So make sure to check when your passport expires, preferably in the early stages of your study abroad planning process. At the time of this presentation being recorded, COVID-19 has added significant delays to the passport application and renewal process. Our office would recommend that you apply at least a year before your expected departure date. If this is the first time you will be applying for a passport and you happen to be on campus, you can complete your application at UA's passport facility, which is located at the Printing and Mail Services. The second thing you will need for the general student visa is proof of finances. This is to show the British government that you will be able to afford things such as food, housing, plane tickets to and from the UK, and etc., and not become a ward of the state. This is a fairly common requirement for many countries' visa applications. Examples of proving your finances include bank statements, scholarships, bill payments, and etc. Finally, the UK requires visa applicants to have their photo and fingerprints taken in a biometric appointment. This will be done after the initial online application is complete. Other countries will ask for similar documents like the UK, but they also may require more. Some common examples include proof of vaccinations, 
confirmation of enrollment, or COE for short, and proof of health insurance. Bear in mind, in regards to the COE, you will need to apply and officially be accepted into the foreign university, and that can take time. So we encourage you to start your study abroad application process sooner rather than later. The third thing you should do when filling out a visa application by yourself is to start the process early, but not too early. Usually the earliest that students can apply for a visa is three months prior to departure, or 90 days. The fourth thing you should do when filling out a visa application by yourself is to find out what parts of the application process are in person versus online. To demonstrate this point, we will be using Japan as our first example. If your permanent address is in Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, or North Carolina, your consulate is located in Atlanta. According to the consulate's website, visa applications must be submitted in person. That means you may have to purchase a flight to get to the consulate in order to get your visa in person. Your work and school schedule may be disrupted, so it is important to plan this out in advance. However, if you live 100 miles or more away from their office, you can apply for a visa by mail. Please keep in mind that this policy is specific to the Atlanta Consulate. The policy over at the Embassy in Washington, D.C. does not allow mail-in applications whatsoever. So make sure to check your consulate about how to submit your visa application. Now, in contrast, let us look at Australia's visa application process as an example. Unlike the Japanese visa application, the Australian visa application is completely done online. No need to travel to the consulate and drop off your application. And no need to do an in-person interview. This policy applies to everyone, regardless of consulate jurisdiction. For more information, type in, in the URL in this slide into your internet browser, or just type in Australia Student Visa in your preferred search engine. Thank you for listening to our visa research presentation. If you have questions about any of the information presented, please feel free to get in touch with us. We would be happy to help. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Bama Study Abroad. This is where you can find the latest information about exciting upcoming events. And if you want to read about students' perspectives on going abroad, check out our blog at BamaBloggersAbroad.com.